Coach New. Can you hear me okay? I can. I got you. Good morning. Hey, hey, I got it working. All right. How are we doing? Good morning. Yeah, well done. Good, good. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, Ball State Cardinals uh, host Western Illinois this Thursday, 7 p.m. ESPN Plus. Coach, coming off a championship year, bowl win. Uh, I mean, how excited are you guys to, to pre be preparing for a game week, uh, to be out there in front of your home fans? I mean, what's that going to mean to you and your team as you run out of that tunnel? Yeah, there's no question we're excited about getting ready to play a football game against somebody else. You know, we've been a uh, very intense training camp here, uh, kind of gotten to that point uh, that we're tired of going against each other. You're tired of seeing the same guy uh, every single day. So uh, we're fired up uh, to be able to play here, you know, Thursday night against Western Illinois. And, um, you know, it's uh, it's been a great week of preparation. We've had a, a great off season and, um, you know, tried to make sure our guys knew night number one at training camp last year's in the past. And, uh, all we're really focused on is is um, is just one game at a time right now, and um, all our preparation has been focused on uh, Western Illinois for the last four or five days. If you have a question for Coach New, use the raise hand feature. I'll open your microphone. Alex Shear, uh, your microphone's open. Coach New, how are you? Alex Shear from the College Sports Connection podcast. Wanted to talk about the loss of Caleb Huntley and how big that is for your offense. Um, obviously, you've got Ty Evans and Will Jones um, ready to step in, uh, but how, how big is that loss of such a playmaker like Caleb? Yeah, no question. It was, it was awesome, actually, to see Caleb uh, start the game last night for the Atlanta Falcons. That was mm -hmm. really cool uh, to see that, but he's no, no doubt it's hard to replace a guy uh, like Caleb Huntley, who was such a special player for us for a long period of time. And um, you knew what you were going to get from him week in, week out. But, you know, our guys, you know, when Caleb was injured a year ago and he was unable to play uh, the last three or four games, uh, our running back group really stepped in by committee and did a great job. You know, you mentioned Will Jones, you mentioned Ty Evans, Donnie Marcus, really all those, all three of those guys stepped in at one point in time, the last three or four games of the season did a great job. And, and that'll be our same approach. You know, we, we've got those three guys that have had a great off season here. They've worked really hard. Uh, they're ready, you know, eager for this opportunity, knowing that, uh, you know, a guy like Caleb Huntley is, has, uh, you know, has moved on to the next chapter of his life. So um, they've worked hard. They've had a, uh, you know, a great camp. And, uh, you know, I know they're excited about the opportunities that lie ahead. Sure. You guys are returning a lot of starters this year on both sides of the ball. How critical is that experience going to be for your team now trying to secure a repeat MAC championship? Yeah, anytime that you can return a significant number of guys like we do that have played a lot of football, uh, that's definitely helps because, you know, their database in the back of their head, you know, they've experienced a lot of situations, uh, you know, over the years. They certainly know the opponents in our conference. They know how competitive it is from top to bottom. Uh, they know what it's like to prepare. They know what it's like, uh, you know, what the process is like when you start out uh, for your week of preparation. They know what that's like. They know how to balance being a student and being an athlete. So it's great on so many levels to have experience. It's certainly helpful uh, to develop our young players as well. When, when our older guys that have played a lot of football and have a lot of experience, they can take those guys under their wing. But, you know, I, I, and again, you know, I've tried to tell our guys all along just because we were good at something a year ago, and we return the same guys doesn't guarantee that we'll be good at that. We got to start the process all over again. And, and everybody's attitude and mindset has been right. Next, uh, Robbie General. Robbie, your microphone's open. Hey, Coach. Uh, I actually got a question from Jordan Gusky uh, talking about uh, uh, Lance Leipold, who obviously, you know, helped build up Buffalo and, and is now at Kansas. Um, how did you see him kind of build up Buffalo? And then how do you think he can translate? what he did there um, to his new job at Kansas. Yeah, I got a lot of respect for Lance, you know, a good friend, um, but a lot of respect for him. And just to see the job that he did over the years, uh, you know, at Buffalo, because when my first year uh, in the MAC as a head coach, my first year back here at Ball State, you know, they were kind of coming off a tough year. And so I, I got an opportunity to visit with him a bunch, uh, you know, at some of the head coaches meetings. And, um, and so, so much respect for him because he built Buffalo uh, into such a, a, a consistent contender every single year and uh, does a phenomenal job in recruiting. Uh, so, so I know he's cut out uh, for the job and the task that lies ahead. Certainly it's going to be very challenging, but, you know, Lance has been a winner 
um, you know, everywhere he's been. So I'm happy for him and, and uh, fired up. And it's a great reflection, you know, on the coaches in the Mid-American Conference. And, and uh, I'm excited for the opportunity for Lance. And we'll miss competing against him, um, you know, but he, uh, you know, certainly did a great job at Buffalo. That it, Rob? Yeah, that's all I got. Okay. I, just, I just wanted to, I just wanted to make sure I didn't cut you off. That's all. No, you're good. Coach, one thing, obviously I've been asking every coach, uh, you know, tell us about your opponent. What do you know about Western Illinois? What are you preparing for on Thursday? Yeah, Western played in a very challenging spring season. You know, you can imagine going to work every single day. They still were dealing with a pandemic just like we did last fall. Uh, but very challenging season. I'm sure on a daily basis, it was probably a challenge just to field how many guys were going to be available for practice. Where are we going to practice? And so um, it's a football team, though. I don't care what their record says. They got better every single week, and they returned some very talented players. You look just on the offensive side of the ball, Connor Sampson has played a lot of football for them. And, uh, you know, he led the conference in passing yards. He's got some tremendous weapons around him and Tony Tate. Uh, Dennis Houston, you know, we focused on those guys a lot. And, um, you know, they, they, they're very explosive in terms of what they, the big playability that they have from an offensive standpoint. So, um, and those guys have played a lot of college football. Uh, and, you know, in addition to that, Tate's certainly an explosive return guy. Um, you know, he had a huge kickoff return last year uh, in the last game of the year for a touchdown against Youngstown. And, um, you're a talented player, man. And, and then you flip over to the defensive side of the ball. And again, they had a defensive coordinator that came in from Lamar. Uh, it was his first year with them. So very, very tough uh, to be able to implement what you totally want to do from a defensive standpoint. Uh, but as I meant, they got better every week and they play hard. Uh, you know, the, the guy to me that I circle when I watch the tape is, is the safety Michael Lawson. You know, he's a guy that, that was at Lamar with the defensive coordinator, came to Western Illinois. He's a physical dude, man. He plays down here. He's a tone setter uh, when you talk about the course of the game. And so, um, you know, it's going to be a great opponent. You know, Western Illinois has had some very good years. You know, three of the coaches on my staff uh, were at Western Illinois at one time, and Tyler Stockton and Josh Seidenberg and Vic Hall, those guys were all three. Uh, Western Illinois at one time. And so uh, over the years, you know, I know they're coming off of, of what might look on paper as a disappointing record, but a uh, good opponent, man, good opponent. And, uh, you know, we've been preparing our tail off. This is like the MAC championship game for us and, and uh, you know, a lot of respect for him. And, you know, I've had a chance to interact some with Jared Elliott, the head coach. And, um, you know, I know he's working his tail off uh, to help, uh, you know, get their program uh, you know, turned around. And so uh, it'll be a tough opponent here on Thursday night. Make no mistake about it. A follow up from Alex Shear. Alex, uh, your microphone's open. Coach, I just wanted to kind of talk about uh, Drew Plitt real quick. Uh, everybody wants to talk about Drew Plitt, right? He's, the, he's your leader of your offense. Um, having him back one last season to kind of run things, that's got to be pretty special for you guys knowing that you have that true veteran leadership under center there's no doubt you know his his the, the you know, drew's played a lot of football games here and uh, and what he did for our program a year ago to help lead us and to help do his part uh you know to win the first championship in 24 years and the first bowl game uh, in history of our program he, he, he did a tremendous job that way but you know when we started the off season this year um, you know, we had a, we had a great conversation together and we both realized that there's so much room for improvement and there's a lot of things that we can clean up. There's a lot of things, certainly, uh, I know on his end of it, that, that he wants to continue to get better at and continue to evolve as a quarterback. And so for him to recognize that coming out of a year like last year uh, says a lot about him from a leadership standpoint, says a lot about him from a character standpoint. So he's worked hard, you know, he's a perfectionist and, you know, sometimes I've had to you know, we've had to have a talk during camp here like, hey, you know, not everything's going to be perfect, man, and, and you can't force the issue. And so uh, he's excited, though, because it's a tremendous challenge. You know, everybody knows that uh, we got a target on our back. We welcome that. But it's all about making sure we uh, have a great approach of playing up, you know, one snap at a time here. And if you can do that uh, for a significant number of plays during the course of the game, then uh, we'll, we'll put ourselves in a position uh, to be successful. Cool. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, Coach. I think we've uh, hit your time here. want to say uh, thank you once again for joining us this morning, and best of luck. Once again, Ball State takes on Western Illinois 
Thursday, 7 p.m. That game can be seen on ESPN+. Plus. Take care and uh, best of luck once again. All right, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Take care.